and welcome into the What's Up Peoria podcast. I am Nathaniel Washburn, your host, coming to you from the Amplify studio here in the main library in beautiful downtown Peoria, back with another episode for you so you know what's going on, what's happening around Peoria, and of course, as always, I am joined in studio, and today I'm excited because I have two guests joining me in studio. I have Peyton McGinn and Jenny Gordon here, and they are librarians here in our Peoria Public Library System, and they're here to talk about summer reading, which is starting very, very soon. So I'm very excited to dive into summer reading with Peyton and Jenny. Peyton, how are you doing this morning? I am doing very well, Nathaniel, how are you? I am good, thank you for joining me today. And Jenny, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. Yeah, you bet, I'm excited to have you both here, and we're gonna come back to Peyton and Jenny in just a second. But before we jump into summer reading, do wanna let you know about some things happening around Uh, Peoria this weekend. Uh, Coming up this weekend at Arizona Broadway Theater, there is music and mimosas. That sounds pretty fun, right? Mm -hmm. I'd never even heard of this. I didn't know this was going on, so I'm pretty excited. This is April 30th, and it's actually 8.30 in the morning. So you can go and have brunch over at uh, Arizona Broadway Theater, and uh, you can listen to some music, enjoy brunch, uh, and just enjoy the morning. So uh, again, that's April 30th at 8.30 in the morning over at ABT. Also happening this weekend is the final Park Fest, which I think there's been three this month alone, Mm. uh, and that is happening at Sunset Park. This is a movie in the park. Uh, Sunset Park is in Vistancia, and and as always, uh, there's going to be food out there. There's going to be people from uh, different city departments. I know the library is going to be out there. Peyton, do you know who's going out there this weekend? I think Miss Kathy Jackson is going to be there, and okay. she is always fun, so it'll be fun to stop by and say hi to her. Just make sure you say hi to Madam Patchouli. Madam Patchouli. She's, mm-hmm. she's, she's going to be out there. She's going to be having fun. Also going on uh, in, in May... Uh, is Peoria Sports Complex Food Truck Movie Night, and this is happening Ooh. May 6th, right? I know. It's pretty exciting. And they're showing in Canto. And so that should be a lot of fun. Uh, But this will be at the Peoria Sports Complex, May 6th, starting at 6 o'clock, goes till 10. And uh, there'll be food trucks out there. Admission is free and parking is free. Uh, But you can come in. You can have uh, food from a variety of different food trucks. Um, It's all kid-friendly with the playground and the splash pad. And then, of course, obviously, the movie Encanto being shown once it gets a little darker. And you can have a really nice family evening out at the Peoria Sports complex uh, on May 6th, starting at six o'clock. So again, a lot going on in the next few weeks here in Peoria. And there's always uh, very cool things going on in Peoria. We always, um, you can always find something to do. Shifting gears a little bit, we're going to jump into summer reading with Peyton and Jenny. And um, we're going to start before we talk about summer reading, I want to give them a chance to tell our audience a little bit about themselves. So Peyton, I'm going to start with you. What what made you want to become a librarian? What's your journey? How'd you end up here? I wanted to become a librarian because I love to read books. I specifically fell in love with the American Girl books when I was younger. Uh-huh. Mm. Did you own American Girl dolls? I own several. Okay. And, I, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm. you know what? I'm not ashamed. I still love them. I think they're great. My daughter does they're too. Adorable. So I, there's nothing to be ashamed they of. Are they're great. fantastic. And I know it's not in the summertime, but actually on May 20th, it's a Saturday, we're going to be having an American Girl tea party at the Sunrise Mountain Library, which wow. I am super excited about. Where, what time is that at? You got to plug that a little that bit. That is going to be from 11 to 1 in the morning in the morning i guess tea time tea time time, yeah so we're gonna have some tea you can bring your dolls you can dress up so i'm super excited so it's kind of full circle that that the thing that made me fall in love with books is something that now i get to to inspire other young readers and i just love the kids the kids are so great and funny and i love to work with um all ages i get love to working with the teens and the adults and it's just such i have the best job <laughs> i just have I the, love that How i have cool. the best job in the whole world and i'm so lucky that i get to work with all of you guys and all the wonderful people at sunrise and the people at maine and we are just so fortunate here at peoria to have such a wonderful two wonderful libraries and library staff who truly all love what they do i agree and i think our our, we do have the best staff we have two great locations Mm -hmm. and and a very dedicated staff oh yes so now you grew up in in uh arizona yes i think you i did uh, i did ridge high school i did i grew up here so it's great that i get to give back to the community that 
I have lived in for almost my whole entire life. That's fan- <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. I feel the same way. I grew up in the Glendale Peoria area and it's really I feel fortunate mm-hmm. that I can live and give back in the same community. So very cool. And you went and became a librarian. And, and I know you started out, uh, you know, in Peoria as a, did you start as a volunteer? I started as a page. A page, okay. Yeah, and so I worked part-time and then I up. worked my way up. And, and you were an intern here too. I was, yes. I was an intern with, with Kathy Jackson. As Kathy Jackson, not Madame Patchouli. <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> Probably both, Yes. <laughs> But yeah, you guys are stuck with me now for forever. That's all right. We don't mind. And when you keep doing the programming you're doing and the way that you're doing it, of course, uh, we don't mind that at all. And you do a fantastic job. So oh, thank you, Nathaniel. Um, I'm glad you're here to, to talk about summer reading. Jenny, let's uh, talk about your background. What made you want to become a librarian and what's your journey here? So I originally was going to be, uh, I was a music major, theater minor, because I was going to be on the stage singing and acting. And you still are in different ways here yes. at the library, right? Yes, so. I get to do story time, so I still get to have that <laughs> element. But uh, about junior year is when Lord kind of changed my path and um, started going and researching how to be a librarian, because as a kid's librarian, I get to do the singing and acting sure. I already love. And then I get to work with kids and I get to inspire the love of learning at a young age. Cause my hope is that by them being excited about it young, that they continue it when they get to teens and adults, that it becomes lifelong learning, that it's not just when they're kids, but yeah, I definitely love, there's so much um, with Peyton where it's like, I get paid to do this. <laughs> yes, I agree. I love Jenny. that. That's very cool. Now, did you grow up in Arizona as well? I will always be a Texan at heart. Uh Uh-oh, here it comes. But I I moved here when I was 10, so the majority of my life has been in Arizona. And that's okay. From hot to hotter. Texas is a a great state, and and, uh, you you know, you couldn't have gone wrong growing up either place. Texas is great, but you know, we're glad you're in Arizona, and we're glad you're here in Peoria. Yeah. So, and and Jenny is a children's librarian here at our main library, Mm -hmm. and and Peyton is the teen librarian at Sunrise Mountain. So we do have a a variety here with with a children's librarian librarian and a a teen librarian who both I think would agree the importance of reading and the importance of summer reading uh, in particular um, is just uh, it's really really one of those things that we try to stress here in in Peoria that this is the time to to not have that summer slide to make sure that you're diving in doing that 20 minutes or more we always say 20 minutes but we really should say or more after that because we don't want to limit people to just 20 minutes but um, very very important so Jenny, tell us a little bit about the county reading program. Uh, It's called All Together Now. So Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that. How can people get involved in that? So starting May 1st, you can actually pre-register. You go to maricopacountyreads.org and you can create an account and you can have way too much fun with your avatar. Oh, very cool. Like choose like your skin color. You can be looking like a Muppet. I always go blue for Gonzo. (laughs) And you can change your hair and your outfits and stuff like that. So you can at least have fun with that. And then June 1st is when you can actually start um, putting in like how many minutes you read and earning points for the prizes. And And what are some of the prizes that people can can earn? So the county gives you ones like at the 500 level for kids. It's Peter Piper pizza, um, like pizza, free pizza, um, raising canes drink for all ages. Oh, cool. And then um, I think they're still working with Rubio's to find out what exactly, but Rubio's of will be something. Right. And then um, at 750 points, you get four tickets to a Phoenix Mercury game. Oh, very cool. For all ages. So you can like, you know, just collect all the tickets and go to all the games. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> I like that. And then an Arizona State Park Pass, which is definitely one of the um, more popular prizes sure. that people love. Yeah. And then at the end, of course, uh, the best prize is a free book. Which, right, that is the best prize. That's what it's all about. It's what we, what, that's what we're here promoting is that reading. Mm-hmm. So very, very cool. A free book that you get to keep. Yes. Right, right. Yeah, you don't have to bring it back to the library. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. even better. <laughs> very cool. So um, obviously lots of prizes that can be earned. And I think also, Peyton, we have prizes as a as a library that we're giving away with along with the county prizes. Can you talk a little bit about what, what are some of the Peoria prizes? Yes, so um, for the teens, we're going to have some different sort of snacks and this year um my partner at Maine Kara and I have decided to do kind of like a little treasure chest oh tell yes. us is that a secretive thing it's, can you not divulge too much we're on gonna that? put some different tchotchkes in it 
<laughs> that we are very excited about. So hopefully I don't want to give too much away because okay. I do like to have a little element of surprise for the teens to kind of keep them excited about reading. Mm. But we are excited to work with some different um, sponsors this year who hopefully um, have provided us with some nice little little treats for the teens and different mm. prizes to keep them engaged. Sure. So we're excited. And I know that the youth department, um, Jenny, has worked with some different prizes. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to say what. Yeah, Culver's for sure. Culver's, right. Okay. We have for both um in some capacity for all ages. Okay. So a free scoop of custard for all ages, and then it's either a concrete mixer for, like, teens and adults. Oh, nice. Or a kid's basket uh, at the end for kids. So. so a variety of prizes that you can earn for children, teen, and adult. And and I want to stress that this, the, anybody mm-hmm. can do this reading program. It's not just for kids. Yeah, it's it's definitely all ages. So if, you, if you've if you got a baby, you can sign the baby up. and Right, yeah, and read to them. Read right? yeah, to the baby, yeah, unless the baby's advanced. <laughs> unless the, well, you never know. <laughs> you never <I> mean, know. <laughs> it, it's possible, but I think that's an important uh, component, Peyton. Uh, and then thank you for mentioning that, because it, w- w- from zero all the way up anybody can participate and you know reading to your children is just as important as them reading to you Mm -hmm. especially at that younger age and we really want to encourage that for those parents out there make sure you're reading to your parent to your your children and then have them read to you as they get older it's really a cool thing to share in and so with that jenny let's talk a little bit about from the from the youth perspective right um what is why is summer reading so important what is the importance of it for for these these kids who are out of school we know we know about the summer slide we know what that is what is the importance of this program to those children because what it does is it it encourages them with all the fun prizes and incentives that's kind of like the the hook that draws them in and then uh as they're reading they're continuing to keep their mind sharp and engaged so that way when they go back to school at the beginning of the school year they're not behind they're actually right where they need to stay at so that's kind of the that's the educational component and it also um there's something about when you can read for fun that right. you enjoy it just so much more. Like I know I'm I'm an avid reader, and yet anything that was required reading in school, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's just like you know, it's like you'd read a chapter, you take a test. You read a chapter, right. you take a test. Right. It's like that's the way to kill a love of reading, right there. Sure. So during the summer, you, it doesn't matter what you're reading. It can be manga, it can be beginner readers, it can be picture books. Like it's what you enjoy reading that is really the the main goal and then by doing something you enjoy you find oh i do like reading and then hopefully you'll graduate even more and there's no tests right you just get to read and there's no tests that go along with it so it's just about reading it's just about having fun so peyton from the teen perspective Mm -hmm. um obviously we know the children's and how important that is but then as the as as kids get older sometimes that reading gets a little bit tougher Mm -hmm. to say hey you know you need to be reading from the teen perspective what is the importance of this program for our teens well just like jenny was saying you know the the teens are so busy with school and they have all that required reading some of the required reading is great some of it is not (laughs) um that's not the teacher's fault um but you know, this is the great time for the teens to be able to read something else that they're interested in and that they want to read and to continue that lifelong learning and loving of reading. So they're able to read those graphic novels or those other chapter books that maybe the schools don't count um, during the year because it's not required reading. So it gives them that free time and that flexibility to read something that they're actually interested in. For sure. And I think it's cool, like even going back and rereading your favorite book, right? Mm -hmm. Or things like, like The Count of Monte Cristo is my favorite book. And I'll go back and read that you know, probably once every couple of years, just because I love that, that book so much. So, or you know, Harry Potter, I can't Harry tell Potter, you how right? yeah. June 1st comes and Harry Potter is it gone. Flies off the shelf yeah. because it's so popular. And, and we know it's been around for 20 plus years now, but we know how popular it is and people like to reread it. My son does that with the diary of a wimpy kid. I mean, he's read that series so many times, but he loves it. So summer reading can al- also be about picking that book up. That's your favorite book and rereading it again. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's okay too. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Right, so right. it's just about reading, and that's really what we're what we want to stress. So, along with the prizes and the reading, there's also some cool summer programming that's going to be going on yeah. as well. So, uh, Peyton, what do you what do you guys have lined up for the summer programming? So for for teens, we're super excited. The county is offering us a free program, and we're going to have indoor mini golf. 
Oh, wow. Yes, I am super okay, excited. I, this is going to be too cool. I can't wait to see this. I know. I'm super excited to see how it's going to be set up. I hope they let me play a round of golf. I'm just hoping nobody's like teeing off and, and busting our windows, right? It won't be, uh, it, you know. <laughs> oh, you know, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, Kara's going to try and have it outside okay. in I think, all the shaded areas that's in the morning. a good idea. So. I, really we will see inside. where well, this is going to go. You say <laughs> mini golf, it usually does not involve a tee and a driver. Right, yeah. So I'm right. thinking just a little putter, you know, should be okay. Something little. Yeah. Well, It'll be okay. If, it, <laughs> if the county is offering that, I'm sure they thought ahead with the libraries. So yes. that's very cool. So mini golf, mm -hmm. anything else going on? Yeah, so mini golf's going to be on June 13th from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. And then in July, I'm super excited, we're going to have Julie from Paint Parties with Julie do a paint class for us. And okay. it's going to be a glow-in-the-dark theme. Oh, mm -hmm. very yes. cool. So I'm not sure what the project is going to be, but I'm super excited that's going to be kind of like glow-in-the-dark, kind of like a different sort of vibe for the teens. That's really cool. I, so I, think, though, I think the teens will really enjoy yeah, that. And something the, different. Something different. And the great thing is is that we're having both of them at Sunrise, um, and then we're also going to have them at the main library, too. So Kara yeah. and I have worked together to... Awesome. spontaneously pick the same programs without even thinking about <laughs> well, it. Well, which is great though, because then it's available wherever you're at in Peoria. You exactly. can make your way to either Maine or Sunrise mm -hmm. Mount and you can take part in the, the teen paint nights, which are a lot of fun. They are so much fun. So Julie will be with us at Sunrise on the 10th of July. Okay. In Very the evening. cool. Yeah. Very cool. And for children, what programs do we have going on? So many. <laughs> <laughs> it's the summer because everyone's out of school. So that's when we, we really ramp up how much programming we offer. So we try and have something every week and we either have it on a Friday or a Saturday. So that way it can kind of, you know, if parents work during the week, sure. they can at least still come to some of the programs. Which is fantastic because we do want to take into consideration that you, some people can't come on a Tuesday morning, right? So yeah. Friday and Saturday is great. So what, what is going to be happening? So um, at the main library, we're going to be doing a kickoff with uh, Storytime with Supergirl. Oh, and we're going to have a superhero themed day on June 1st. So okay. that one is a Thursday. And then I know Sunrise is going to have a kickoff program where they have Bubble Maniacs foam party. Obviously, I am super excited that one is that. outside. That, please make that outside. <laughs> Kids love bubbles. Yes. That is fantastic. Very, very cool. And then um, a lot of the programming we try and have, again, at both branches. So that way you can cover both. So it's like we're going to have... Um, Storytelling with the African drums at both sides. Okay. So any programs that, where it's at both, it's at 11 a.m. at sunrise and then 3 p.m. at Maine. Okay. So uh, again, if, if you live near sunrise, great. You don't have to drive all the way down to Maine and then vice versa. We are offering a variety of these programs at both libraries so that everybody can take part in it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Anything else? Um, so it's a lot in June. You know, we got our America Hurrah with Jan Sandwich. We're going to have, um, and then in July, we're going to have Michael Steele, who does both magic and yo-yo tricks. Oh, cool. And then Dr. T-Rex Science. A lot of people think he deals with dinosaurs because his stage name is Dr. T-Rex. Sure, you would think that. But he's more about uh, dry eye science experiments. Oh, okay. Cool. Very um, cool. And then we're ending it all on August 1st with the Balloon Cowboy Arizona Rick. Right, it's and everybody loves Arizona Ray. He's a cool. classic. He's a he is like he's a must have in the mm -hmm. library. So, um, obviously a lot going on, and the summer is jam packed with programs for teens. Um, we still have our adult book clubs going on. So if you're an mm -hmm. adult out there and you're like, well, hey, what's for me? There's still the you know read it and eat it book clubs going on. There's the normal book clubs. We have adult programs as well, but there is a lot going on for both teens and for children. And I know that for adults, uh, they're really going to be pushing um, raffle baskets this year. Okay. So because it's all together now is the theme, so it's like going to be all together. Um, like a raffle basket of like going to the movies mm -hmm. or gardening. And every week they'll have a different basket up for the raffle. And um, I, I don't know as far as the parameters, what they're going to do, if it's going to be so many minutes reading or you have to go to a program. Like, I'm not sure of that, but I know that that's the big push for adults to hopefully get them interested in doing fun extra things is come for a fun raffle basket nice and raffle baskets are are very popular and i know the friends have done those in the past and they've mm -hmm. been extremely popular popular there's all there's something for everybody this summer at the peoria libraries so again adult teen 
ch- child, it doesn't matter. This is all about reading. This is all about making sure we're, we're um, you know, gaining knowledge, we're having fun, we're reading things that we've maybe always wanted to, or even that we've read before. It's really just about getting a book in your hand and enjoying some summer. If you're going on vacation, come to the library first. Check out some books to take with you. That's always a good idea. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going on a road trip and you're not driving, if you are driving, please don't read. But if you're not driving, grab a book to read. Well, grab- you could do a book on CD. You could. You could do an audio book. You know, we have tons of audio books that you could stream if you mm-hmm. wanted to yeah. or, or a book on CD. Um, but you can... Uh, check out books, take them with you. You know, if you're going to the beach, don't get too close to the water with our books, please. But, uh, you know, <laughs> get out there, enjoy enjoy the time reading. Um, before I let you guys go, I got to ask, though, Jenny, is there a particular title you would recommend? So I, I have a hard time with titles. I do more either authors or genres because, like, Gail Carson Levine is one of my favorites because um, she does, like, fractured fairy tales. She's uh, won an award for Ella Enchanted, which is the Cinderella story. Uh, kind of flipped and my favorite of hers is fairest which is the snow white story oh okay. a little bit flipped um and uh what makes that one interesting is that she's got the raven hair the the white skin and the ruby red lips and everyone thinks she's ugly oh because interesting because she lives in a culture where everyone has dark skin so she's looked at as the oh so the, she's the little, other yeah she's a little different yeah then. so okay. and the whole point of the book is like she's trying to become beautiful and hence ferris so i thought that was an interesting flip yeah, it's on an interesting the story. take on it i like that yeah. yeah okay very cool so what is that again so that's gail carson levine l-e-v-i-n-e okay um that's it's a great series all right very cool thanks for that and peyton anything that you would recommend to t- to the teen readers so I'm going to go with the, another classic. I love The Hunger Games. Mm. Oh, that's a great series, right? Yes. Yeah. I and, love it. And for the teens out there who may have seen the movie first, mm-hmm. what is the book offering? What does the book series offer that the movies don't? So the book is obviously... A hundred times better. <laughs> the book series, by the way, are always better. And always nine better. times out of ten, it's very rare that the books are worse than the movies. And uh, it, when you you see the movie first, and then you go back and you read the book, you're like, they left. So, so much out, much out. Mm-hmm. that is so important. And the Hunger Game movies are great. They are great. They did the, a fantastic job. But the movies, I mean, I'm sorry, the books are just so are so well done. And what I love is that it's um, a nice gender neutral read. Mm-hmm. So boys and girls mm-hmm. yeah. both love to read the Hunger Games because it's just such a fun dystopian novel. Right. That it's just so different so different when it came out i remember reading and thinking like wow this is great i have to know what happens and um suzanne collins actually has gone back and she wrote the prequel that came out i think three years ago um when we were all at home in lockdown (laughs) and um she has gone back and rewrote you know about one of the earlier hunger games featuring um everyone's favorite president snow so they're making that into a movie later this year so so many kids now the younger generations are going back and rereading the hunger games because it's cool again. Well, yeah, and when you have a prequel, it's a prequel. It's like you got to read it. F- you got to go back and reread it to kind of you know refamiliarize right, and yourself. reconnect with yes. with the story and figure out. It's fun to see how how in depth she went and how connected everything is. I mean, she got mm-hmm. super creative with it. And she did. I love that. Such a good job with it. And then the Hunger Games on its own is just fantastic. So. It is, and again, book book books are again usually more exciting i remember mm-hmm. when jurassic park came out and i, mm-hmm. I had read the, the michael Crichton's Jura- jurassic park and thought man they left out some of the best scenes <laughs> and obviously you can't put everything in a movie it'd be you know eight hours long so we understand like that. lord of the rings like lord of the rings right um but even there it's like so many cool things were left out that yeah. then and you can you had to pick and choose which is why reading the book is so important because your imagination is always going to be better than the movie version of anything so um definitely the these are great uh, suggestions. Thanks for, for uh, bringing those into the conversation. Um, and if you need more information on these, of course, go see your local librarian. They will be able to help you find these titles and any other titles you're looking for, as well as any information that you have on summer reading. You can also go to our website and, and get more information from the library website on summer reading, how to register. Registration starts May 1st. Mm-hmm. So you want to jump on that early. And then obviously the program itself kicks off on June 1st and goes until August 1st. So yes. make sure that you get on the website, get information and get yourself registered. We want to thank the county as well for all that they do and all that they provide 
um, with this, with the programming that they do, the prizes that they have. Uh, summer reading is so important, so we're really thankful for, uh, to the county for continuing this program and, and, uh, and making it a very uh, important part of what we do throughout our summer as well. So, um, Jenny and Peyton, thank you so much for joining me today and talking about summer reading and the yeah. importance of it. Um, you can talk to Jenny and or Peyton at their prospective libraries. Peyton's out at Sunrise. Jenny is here at the main library, or you can see any uh, staff or librarian to get more information about summer reading. Again, I want to thank Peyton and Jenny for joining me. And until next time, this is What's Up Peoria.